This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by... Yes, I am. Oh, question. You heard is this, the meeting is at four? Four. Okay, question for you. Um, I understand that I was looking on your website and you folks have what is listed as a measure of wood and bark. Yes. Uh, do you guys actually pay someone to do that? Yeah, it's more of us appointed position. Uh, so so they, are they a volunteer? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, okay, so they don't get any tax money. I don't believe so, no. Okay, oh, well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, another another question and concern I had uh, was brought up by taxpayers here is that uh, I guess there's some issues with lake access. Are, yeah, are, uh, I'm I'm the new selectman. There are a lot of lot of issues around that. The, there is a boat landing. It's a public boat landing. Uh, are people being arrested for entering the lake without owning property on the lake? No, not the, not to my knowledge. Uh, that, that's the accusation, and uh, there's uh, I've heard it wow. twice from two different uh, sources. Uh, the only the only thing I can say is is the public uh, if they are trying to enter not using the public boat landing that could be a problem. That's the only thing I can say. So be, if they are crossing private property, that's correct. Okay, all right. But there is a public on the on West Lake Road. There is a, a public boat landing. Okay, I mean I know I've walked out sort of into the lake on one of the little peninsulas when I first moved here ten years ago or whatnot well, to the area ten years ago. And uh, you know, it seemed to have easy access and so forth, but I just keep hearing concerns about the about the access. Um, I have to go. Oh, okay, all right. Thanks for answering two questions. What's your name? Uh, Walter. All right. Thanks, Walter. Are you on the board of Slagman? No, I'm actually. Yeah. Planning board. Oh, okay. I could ask you some planning board questions if you want. <laughs> I'm mostly here for the board of Slagman. Yeah, I'm Ridley. It's a poor man's TV station. I've heard you guys. Oh, thank you. Well, I just wanted I to be... I think I've watched some of your Ridley reports on the internet. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I guess, uh, why, why does Dublin have to have a planning board, or do they, in your mind? Um, I think that we have to have a planning board because we have to um, basically... Um, we, we write the ordinance we basically handle the ordinance as far as any application to come in for subdivisions, uh, site plan reviews, stuff like that. It's because the community thinks that they, they should have some uh, say over how the town is developed. You know, that in, in it has to be a balancing between personal property rights, you know, individual property rights, and uh, the, you know, the needs and desires of the community as far as how you know, development should occur in the town. I mean, when you say needs and desires of the community, I mean, that's often expressed in the form of representatives, you know, elected representatives, which is probably better than having a dictator, but at the same time, elected representatives, they tend to be easily corruptible, they tend to, to lord it over the people, they don't tend to be all that representative in, in his historical experience. Well, in, in fact, the, the planning board, although the planning board can suggest changes to the ordinance, it's really the ordinance has to be voted on by uh, the, the town uh, at the town meeting or, or before the town meeting by ballot every year. In, so in fact, the, the uh, planning board doesn't, doesn't have any um, authority for you know actual actually making the ordinance themselves. They they can they can propose an ordinance or changes to the ordinance to the to the town. And the town has to adopt them and not adopt them. What have you done from your position of power to make it easier for people to, to build and expand um, I in think this difficult economy? I think that, you know, one thing we've, we've addressed recently was uh, is affordable housing. And I think that, you know, the state actually came down and said, you know, towns can't just pull up the drawbridge and say, you know, we don't want more people here or we don't want poor people here. You know, we want to have, you know, eight-acre lots so that, you know, people, poor people can't come in. and. Uh, and so we've we've tried to address that. Um, one particular way we did that was is to uh, make it easier to do accessory living units inside a house, because in Dublin, especially, we have a lot of big old houses here that you know only have like one or two people left in them, and uh, you know the, the prior rules made it made it really hard for people to you know 
either, you know, have a relative living in there or just, you know, part out the house and, and divide it between different tenants, which seems to make a lot of sense from an environmental point of view. You know, instead of heating this giant house with one person in it, you know, you can actually use it for affordable housing. Um, that's, you know, one of the things we've done recently. Um, and we've also recently been working on changes like um, allowing windmills and extra work on solar um, projects to, to make it easy to put solar projects in town. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, some people don't like to look at them and that sort of thing, but I think that it's important. I think it's, it's uh, you know, an important part of people's property rights to be able to use their property, you know, for, for you know, solar solar panels on it or put a windmill on it, you know, to provide their own electricity and then can either get off the grid or do net metering. Yeah. So, so it, uh, it, you know, it subtracts from their... And, and what's your name? Persons. Okay. Oh, Mr. Simpson, I appreciate your transparency. I don't get that from all politicians. <laughs> Rather, I don't consider myself a politician. Yeah, probably at, the, at that level, you probably don't think so, but it's technically true. You're elected, right? Or are you appointed? Uh, we're elected. Okay. All right. Great. Right. I'll see if any selectmen walk by. <laughs> well, you should be standing before. I think they have a meeting this afternoon. Yeah, 4 p.m. That's right. Egypt people is very nice, and if the Egypt people take my advice, they will strike down the one party state they fear. But that had better not happen here, cause we know that everything would fall apart if the city of Keene, New Hampshire starts to listen to the malcontents at Free Keene, and sort of kind of cut spending. Cause the government needs some expensive things like the wasteful 34 West building and the boondoggle jail where we put hat wearers and other people who could be considered swearers. Freaking.com